out of YouTube. Welcome to another episode of Let's Get Heavy, where we explore the realms of heavy music. In this episode, we sit down with Simon and Jeff of the German metalcore band Defocus to delve into their latest album, There Is A Place For Me On Earth, released March 1st. <laughs> Um, so first of all, I just want to welcome you to uh, Let's Get Heavy UK. Uh, I'm Stevie, aka Beardwood Baggins here. And first of all, I want to congratulate you on the release of your uh, new album, There Is A Place For Me On Earth, which, by the way, I absolutely love that album name. Absolutely love it. How does it feel to finally share this album to the world? Well, first of all, thank you. Uh, we really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Glad that you enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, it's absolutely a killer album, guys. Absolutely killer. So, yeah, how, how does it feel? How does it feel to share it to the world? Thank you, man. I mean, like, to me, it felt, like, so relieving. It It's just, like, we, we worked on that project for so long, right? And that's why it's just you can't wait for that day and you're super excited for the album just being released and everybody like i mean you make music obviously for for yourself because it's fun but at the same time you're you want people to being able to listen to it right and so therefore i'm just super thankful for it to be finally released and it's also some kind of some big uh I don't want to say it's stress, but a big part of what we dealt with in the last few months um, just fell off. That's what it kind of feels like to me. And so for those who are new to Defocus, could you briefly describe your sound and the kind of energy you bring to your music? Oh, yeah. So if you've never listened to us, um, be prepared for some high energetic uh, fast and aggressive uh, modern metal, basically, right? We have a few tracks that go like crazy with like, in terms of energy and like breakdowns are like really hard hitting. But um, yeah, I think especially with this album, we wanted to explore a little different side uh, as well and experiment it a little bit. So definitely give it a try if you haven't heard it yet. Thanks. And uh, so on the new album, uh, the album title, as we've just stated before, This Is A Place For Me On Earth, is both defiant and hopeful. What's the story behind this title and how does it reflect the themes on this album? Uh, well, so like the album title itself is um, it's in my, like something that, I, that I've been thinking about quite for a long time right now it's something that really that i that i really worked out for myself like it, it really catches my emotion every time i read that sentence because it's just so real for me and i guess for a lot of people out there probably um because whether well, the overall topic of this of this album is mental issue and finding a place where you actually feel like fitting in in this rapidly changing society and uh, therefore this album is should bring some like trust in the future trust in yourself and bring bring up the, the fact that there is actually a place for everybody and you just you just need to find it kind of that's how i would sum it up yeah i was literally just about to say that myself there is a place for every single person uh, regardless of what you are in life as well um so that's why as soon as i heard that album title that resonated with me straight away because like i said because no matter what you are in life um there is a place for you on this earth so that is why i absolutely love that title name so the album explores a more introspective direction was there any personal experiences or realizations that sparked this uh, thematic shift oh you might you mean lyric wise uh, lyric wise yeah yeah uh well so to be honest i i once came to that point where i was saying like okay i wrote a lot of political and uh, like topics that are about society and everything and sometimes it kind of felt like that i'm trying to yeah 
get behind what I actually like. I, I, I never really talked about my own emotions right then. And I realized there's a lot that I would actually have to work with or to kind of yeah face because sometimes it's just you feel like you you're trying to get around solving your own problems and this is where i just thought okay i i really have to do that it just feels feels a lot better to me to, to put that into into in those emotions into music and um yeah therefore I just felt like it, it was so needed for me to work out those topics, um, which was where the shift came from. Yeah, cathartic, and it like so it makes you, you know, express them emotions. Good, uh, you know, to release sort of thing, isn't it? So, um, yeah, totally with you on that. Uh, what's 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 been the what's the writing process been like on this album for you guys? Well, the 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 writing process was quite interesting um because the the we wrote the first record like at home during the pandemic and everyone was like just sending ideas around and it it kind of felt weird uh back then now that not that i think about it but i don't know it's 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 kind of how we learned to like um talk to each other and work together right and and we basically did the exact same thing again like everyone was at home like we have we have our own little discord where we share all the ideas and demos that we record and yeah it it, it kind of works for us right so the funny thing is during like the writing process like i think at at no point we were in the same room together right i think simon was was joining me at my home like recording uh some stuff but uh, I think we were never in a room like all the like the four of us, right? Which is which is quite interesting when you write like a whole record with a full band, basically. Um, but yeah, we got so used to it, right? And and on the first record, like we we had this vision in mind that some the the direction we wanted to go, right? And for the second record, now we really wanted to like have a few ideas laying around um you know like not just we write 10 songs and that's the record and and that's it right um because before going into like recording and writing we thought about okay what what do we want to bring to the table do we want to do exactly the same do we want to try new stuff and if we try new stuff what direction we want to go in like what do we want to do and the 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 thing is that everyone in the band has like so different so many like different musical backgrounds and we didn't want to like hold anyone back in their in their creativity right and i don't know we just went with uh with the flow and 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 just embraced the ideas that everyone had and you know we had like i think 20 or 30 demos uh laying around at the end and yeah we we kind of picked the ones that are pretty good that would fit together right and we had the choice to like um choose between different ideas and uh work on them to make like this one whole thing where everything uh does kind of fit together and even though we have like different influences like hip-hop influences and like i don't know like lo-fi hip-hop influences right um i do think they they fit pretty good and and you know it's not just like all the same but it's like a different side on like uh, from from each of us in 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 every song basically and 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 that's something that i that i really enjoy doing because it, it's much easier to just uh commit to to your ideas rather than you know like oh this this doesn't sound good or this doesn't sound something like we would make but you know just just committing to what you have and i think that's why we all are like pretty happy with the outcome because everyone had the chance to to shine in some way nice nice it did so when it comes to the lyrical side of things does everyone kind of does everyone kind of chip in with the lyrics or does that just solely come from yourself simon oh well i mean you'd rather have to ask jeff for that but it seems like <laughs> <Yeah>. we... <laughs> it, it seems like we we discussed basically all of the songs uh, when it came to to the lyrics i mean obviously like uh, the the main ideas were were brought from uh, by me um but we basically talked about 
every single word almost like um we we are that kind of band where everybody tries to bring in it, like own ideas and stuff so i guess that's why we all even do that on the on the vocals or on the on the instrumentals even though for example our drummer has no clue about writing guitars but still has its <laughs> own idea about how the guitars can sound and so therefore um uh, the same goes with the vocals and also for the lyrics i would say nice. yeah i mean i remember when when you uh told us first about like uh you know going uh more personal uh lyrical wise into this album and you know you came up with the album title and we're like all super close um we we didn't really di discuss it to be honest because we were all like yeah that that 100 makes sense right because of course it was not just simon like struggling with some things it it was the other guys and including me as well and I don't know it just made sense for everyone I was like okay that's that's a feeling that everyone can relate to and it was no no question right it 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 was interesting because we get um we we care so much about small little details and you know we can talk about the track list for days but when he told us the album title everyone was like okay that's good let's do that let's go with that which was quite funny <laughs> I absolutely love that. So how do you typically write songs? Do you, do you kind of just, so maybe it's when you're touring on the road sort of thing, does maybe someone come down, just jot it down, or do you just get into a room together and write as a band? Well, um, usually it starts with um, just an idea, like with, usually it started with a, with a guitar riff and some basic drums to a song and, you know, like I would send the other guys some some ideas and our drummer um, started to do that as well with this record. Um, the thing that we we did different this time um, was like not starting out with guitars uh, in particular, but uh, rather starting out with like samples or ambient sounds, right? Because it would allow us to be much more... Um, to have much more freedom in the, in the creativity, right? So sometimes it would just like some some random keys, and uh, you know you can go like super heavy, but you can also go like in a little bit softer direction if you want, right? And that's um, what we kind of chose to do to to challenge ourselves a little bit more creatively. So yeah, I think all of the songs do start with like something very simple that you find on the internet, basically. Yeah. Touching on that uh, more melodic side, you musically you've incorporated more electronic and melodic elements into your signature metalcore sound. How did this experimentation come about, and what does it bring to the album? Well, I mean, as Jeff already said, like everybody in that band has a lot of different musical background and influences, and I guess um, we we definitely can blame Jeff for that. <laughs> <Because> <laughs> Is the one that, that loves uh, electronic music and uh, hip hop and stuff. Like, I mean, it's it's a lot of different influences on that album. But I guess uh, Jeff is the one that really brings in the, the 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 electronic flavor. Just in my opinion, I could be wrong with that, um, but uh, that's just my perception. So uh, for me, it's like um, he's 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 not an, he's not an, he's he's not an, he's a great nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Like in, in, some way, in some way, in some way. <laughs> so what what electronic bands would you say has influenced this uh, this style then? Um to be honest, um like I think you can especially hear it on the last song on the record, that's actually kind of the title track uh, to our album. Um uh I listened to a lot of like Tycho and Bonobo. They're like uh, this uh, electronic artists that like it's now it's like I don't I don't really know shit about this music to be honest but I think it's like some dance electronical EDM kind of artist um, but like in a more ambient way you you need to listen to it I'm bad at explaining stuff like this but um, uh, it's it's basically Tycho and Bonobo they were listening so much uh, on during that time because and you know. For me, it doesn't really matter like which which genre 
something is specifically i rather care about what feelings the the music uh give me right the emotions that are like portrayed or you know i listen to like super heavy music as well to you know like you know to 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 like work at the gym or or you know but i also like something softer as well and um i really don't like um uh um how do i say it? i don't listen to to i don't say that i, I don't listen to it because i don't like it because there are some hip-hop tracks as well that do have like this high energy like you know you want to mosh around when you hear it right yep yep and i think um that's something that we really wanted to to merge with with our music as well because at the core we're still the the heavy band be focused right but you know we can also like take our favorite bits from here and there and incorporate it to our music basically yeah yeah exactly uh, i mean look at uh ice t when he was touring in europe oh, yeah yeah it, he, he got crazy mosh pits when he came to europe didn't he so uh yeah yeah you can't you don't just have to mosh to to, uh, to heavy metal music of course can do it to other yeah. things um and i absolutely love ice t as well he's an absolute legend um yeah yeah so um the the fan reception and the touring the album obviously dropped uh on friday just gone march 1st mm -hmm. uh what has the reaction uh from the fans been like so far oh i mean uh as far as we can say from the internet the, <laughs> The, like the experience was for me that people really loved it so far uh, i mean we we uh released the music video one day before the album release for the song don't let it hurt me and i just checked in today it's uh, already on i guess one one hundred thousand uh views wow um and like um yeah i'm like super i don't know what to say to be wow yeah. Ab absolutely impressive it, it's it's a it's a bit weird because you know we released the singles and the album but um we haven't had the chance to like play the songs live and it, it's hard to describe because of course you see the numbers on the screen but but how is it like in the real world right um i mean some people texted us and like oh shit, this is so good like heavy breakdowns and don't let it hurt me the music video and everything is insane and I really appreciate that, right? But at the same time, it still still feels a little bit surreal to me, right? Because it's still just messages on your screen, right? I don't know if that's just me personally, but um, you know, we're we're playing our release show this Saturday in our hometown, and nice. I really I really can't wait for like see people oh, yeah. react to our music, right? Um, because I don't know. It's 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 so different, like writing it and listening to our music, and and then playing it live. It's such a different feeling for me. Nice. And where is that home show? Just in case anyone will be watching this beforehand, <laughs> that way they well, can find you. If... <laughs> We're in the south of Germany in a small, beautiful city called Aalen. Nice. With double A. It, with so... double A. If you're in the area, come. Uh, you can get some tickets. Uh, on there on saturday night nice uh have you, who, who's supporting you guys oh, we're oh yeah with our friends of, of the <laughs> our friends of consumer mavis and oral eyes are gonna join which is gonna be sick <laughs> oh definitely yes. that's I've, gonna... I've not seen um like consumer for example i've, I've not seen them live for so, such a long time and i actually never saw mavis and oral eyes live but the songs that they that those guys just released are absolutely crazy so i'm just so excited to be there i i hope that i will get the chance to actually see most of the of the shows because we obviously have got a lot of work to do on that day as well uh organizing that whole um gig and stuff but i'm super excited for that that's gonna be an epic show that like epic show <laughs> yeah <laughs> but and like i said before the internet seemed to um gel really well and the internet can be an absolute savage place um as <laughs> as as you guys can well know being in a band you'll be open to criticism and if the internet is digging it then he's already done a, a cracking job with that album so uh but Thanks. continuing with this evolution in your sound do you anticipate reaching a new audience with this album well 
for me, it feels like we never uh, thought about kind of trying to reach new new people with that. Um, I do even think that we never have the time to think about audiences in that way. Um, but it feels to me like, at, at least for um, the friends or people that I that I that I connected with, uh, and I showed the album or that even listened to it without me uh, being annoying, um, just told me like, oh yeah, I mean, I, I'm not into that kind of music, but that song is great. Like, and I heard that um, like it. There was a lot of truth behind that this time, <laughs> so it felt like um, there are actually a lot more people that uh, listen to our new songs than to the ones before because it's just there's like in my opinion there's a lot of more uh, variety in the the way the songs are structured, the, the influences and stuff, and so I guess therefore it could be for a much broader audience if you would say so. Yeah, yeah, like. It, it wasn't specifically like in intended in in you know like when writing it to like reach you know this this kind of audience it just kind of uh, made sense at the end um because like simon said at the beginning we beginning we just did it for ourselves to have fun right and um the the interesting thing to me is that especially a song like don't let it hurt me um it's, it's it's pretty cool in that context because i remember my girlfriend saying when when she heard her heard that song she said okay i personally don't listen to metal at all but i can listen to this this is pretty good like this is super fun even though it has like the heavy elements i can <laughs> still enjoy it even though i don't listen to like screaming in my ear right yeah yeah i introduced the album to some uh synth synth wave fans and they really oh. enjoyed. They really enjoyed it, especially the oh, oh, really? especially the title. Uh, sorry, especially the title album song. Do you know what I mean? Uh, there was a place for me on earth. They really dug that uh, over the weekend. <laughs> uh, so that is awesome. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So even even some like some synth people are even digging your album. So there you go. <laughs> That's super cool, man. Nice. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. So. Um, so your live shows uh, are legendary. How are these touring plans around the release album going? And uh, apart from your release sh celebration, are there any other plans to tour in the future? Well, right now we're uh, playing like shows basically all, uh, basically on, on, in the whole March, right? Yeah. And um, we've got a few festivals lined up like in the spring and in the summer. And we are, uh, you know, still working on um, on going on tour, like in the fall. Like last year, we played shows in in Europe, right? We went, of course, in Germany, but we also went to Austria and nice. Swiss and and Czech Republic, you know. And we're planning to do the same, and of course, uh, expand that a little bit, you know, and uh, basically like travel as far as we can go to like show people our songs. Nice. Any countries that you haven't played yet that you would like to? <laughs> Lots of. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, um, starting with close neighbors like the UK or yeah. I'd love to go to um, Scandinavia, the Baltics, whatever, because like there is such a huge metal community up there and um so i mean obviously i'm also interested in the landscapes and in the people and everything so that's why i just love to play anywhere but uh, <laughs> i haven't received that uh that much messages and stuff from the states and from australia and we would just love to play over there and uh just connect with people overseas that will be just amazing i mean the uk is kind of also overseas but not too far away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean uh, i mean i can i can agree i uh it, it, i don't say this because uh, basically you're from the uk right but i am yes. um, as, as as simon just said um i think the the music scene in general um over there is like crazy. I don't know if you can even compare it here into Germany because like we're from a small town. We have like 
there is a scene of course but um i don't know i just feel like um people are like much more open-minded and have like a bigger scene over there and i really would like to to get to know all of them and i remember my my personal dream like um uh, i think yesterday or two days ago someone uh you know just shared like a, our album in in their instagram story and i just texted him like oh yeah that's super cool and stuff and he said oh yeah you have to come to japan man <laughs> <laughs> nice and i was like hell yeah that, nice. that's my, my that's my dream goal right to to go to japan and play some song like yeah 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 you have to tell me it's pretty good we, we want to see you play there <laughs> that is epic that is epic yeah, and that is cool that as nice. well that it's you guys that's responding to the instagram messages as well that's pretty cool um have you graced the uk yet out of curiosity have you played the uk uh i was a per i like i was on holiday like so many times in the uk but we haven't ever played there so it's not yet it's, it's 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 uh really overdue we, we really need to to come yeah you guys <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be keeping tabs on your socials just for when it gets announced yeah 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 We're uh, working on it. if you if you if you you have to come to to newcastle it's a bit cold in the north mine so make sure you bring your oh, winter <laughs> in, in iceland two weeks ago so we got <laughs> oh really <laughs> yeah iceland how was that show oh man uh, like we just we just recorded the the video for don't let it yeah. me up there and it was so crazy like, yeah I, I i had no expectations i mean in a, in a good sense right so because i was just curious on how the how iceland is because i've never been that way up north on this planet and it was just crazy cool like the everything was i mean you you can kind of see it in the video but like we 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 recorded some stuff at the at the most beautiful places that we've seen nice. it was just breathtaking so um yeah that, that's that's one of the great things about being in a band we'll get to travel and do these sort of things as well and it uh I, I would love to have that opportunity yeah that's absolutely mint. anyway we're getting slightly off topic yeah <laughs> but that's quite all right it's it's my fault uh getting into a little bit of a, a deeper dive into the album so if you had to pick uh what's the one song on the album that you feel embodies its core message the most hmm. should i go first or you <laughs> first i got my uh i got my idea already so yeah i think we're kind of on the same page actually because I yeah i uh, well it's two songs for me actually right and and they're probably my favorites at the moment it's it's so it's definitely don't let it hurt me because um it definitely like you know embodies everything that we stand for musically in in some way but it's also like a, such a personal track and i think it definitely um is like relates to that feeling of the album title and and you know all the thought that went behind uh that like into one song and and the same for me is like consumed by you because it does that as well so consumed by you is also a favorite of me because i really love what we did with the production on this track especially and because at the at the beginning it sounded very different from from what it is now and i'm 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 really really proud of that and it also with after you you showed us like the lyrics simon i think i really you know related to that uh, as well because it also does like fits so much like um on this personal topic like struggling with yourself and maybe struggling with 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 someone else that's maybe not good for you right and i think um these two songs are like my my also my personal favorites and uh yourself simon yeah i mean uh okay so jeff was right with only it hurt me so <laughs> We definitely picked the same song right there but if i would have to pick another one representing that album it would okay right my my like that was my spontaneous decision but i do think that <laughs> another one in my grave currently is one of the songs that i would count in for that as well because it kind of has all the all the different influences that this album offers so like there is a lot of electronic stuff in there with the with the synths in the in the chorus for example but also some new metal vibes and 
okay well so i just had to listen to that song uh, yesterday i guess so um and i was just like yo okay those guitars in that breakdown that jeff made yeah. super i don't even know how to how to say it <laughs> it's so crazy it just feels like somebody's stomping on your ear while crushing the other one like uh it's just trying to kill your ears whatever it's just super heavy and i just love that song so i as my second pick i would go with that song <laughs> nice my uh my personal favorite would have to be uh the the opener which is uh let the bond be my grave which oh yeah is, yeah that yeah, is yeah, an yeah. absolute <laughs> I, I love the breakdown on that to be fair I, I'm, a, I'm a sucker yeah, for, yeah. for breakdowns breakdowns riffs and guitar <laughs> solos that's my bag <laughs> if it's got yeah, any we... guitar solo in that album actually <laughs> <laughs> We want to have one on that album, but we just didn't make it. Like we are not heavy enough. I don't know, but we we need to have one on the next album for sure. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> it's like I want to see Jeff like... on the on stage, like playing this. <laughs> it doesn't need to have all three songs. It's got one of them. I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 such a running gag in our band, right? Because. Uh, you know, one day we were like rehearsing and some random guy, uh, you know, where <laughs> the building where we rehearse, right? It's like, um, we're like a lot more rehearsal rooms with other bands as well. And I think this guy just, you know, I think he was a little bit drunk. He, he basically went into the wrong room and he saw us playing there. <laughs> and he was like, you know, like, I think he was like this 40 year old dude with like long hair and like, you know, but, okay maybe <laughs> maybe 50 or 60 maybe he was older and he had like this you know like um uh denim jacket with all the metal bands like with the patches on it the, the battle vest was, <laughs> yeah the battle vest oh hell yeah uh, he, he had his battle vest and he was like looking at me and he was like man you need to stand like with your legs like wide open and you play you need to play guitar <laughs> solos that's the only real way to play metal right and he even took the legs and put them like no smile no smiling as well no smiling can't smile yeah. spread your legs arms yeah, folded like... arms folded just serious <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I think he even left with a free T-shirt just to get rid of him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless him! Yeah. Excellent. You know, since, that was since just crazy. Then but, yeah. Since then, it's basically like this running gag. Like, oh man, we need to record a guitar solo somewhere in our album. And you I was already like, yeah. to position yourself on the stage, right? Like that. <laughs> <laughs> Any further, you'd be doing like full on splits, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just waving in the wind and stuff like that. It's gonna be crazy. Excellent. So, uh, um, the German metalcore scene uh, seems to be uh, thriving, uh, not just metalcore, but just metal in general. Uh, myself personally has always wanted to to attend Wagen, it's always been a dream to attend that festival uh but what oh, do you think yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, what do you think sets apart uh what do you think sets it apart and are there any other german bands you recommend to our listeners hmm. so my first pick is the band i just mentioned that we're going to play with on saturday oral Eyes, because they just i i just love that sound it's super energetic and melodic at the same time and um as i just said i'm super excited for seeing the guys play live especially the song overdose i'm so obsessed with it right now because it, it was released the same day as uh don't let it hurt me actually and um so jeff you want to go next <laughs> <laughs> i mean i mean i would i was about to say the same like uh all yeah. lies there yeah they're like uh on the same label and it's it's super cool because um you know these guys are like so young i think they're like just turned 18 and they're like super talented with 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 everything they've they've put out recently and um yeah i i think they're 
they will be a lot bigger i think in the in the future they're working on it they have like so cool songs and the songwriting is super cool and that that's what i would recommend at, at this point as well nice nice everyone get onto those bands get on them yeah <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, getting close to, to wrapping things up then. So, but before we do, what's one thing you hope listeners take away from There Is A Place For Me On Earth? I mean, if there's one thing that I could wish for, it's just that, like, if only one person that, like, gets behind the message of the album and what we really wanted to transport yeah, with it, yeah. then I'm just, then I'm just absolutely fine with that i guess that's for me this is the most important thing because i i just i just realized that there are actually lots of people that have kind of sa the same struggles and so therefore i'm just thankful for everybody that really impersonates that and to know that there is a place for everybody on this planet no matter where you are what you do or what your problems are right now so you just know that there is always a way and there's always a place for you somewhere and somehow you can manage it to find that and if if just everybody that, that that has those struggles gets to know our songs or this album so i'm just super thankful for that and to hope that it helps in some sort of way to kind of cope or deal with any issues beautifully put beautiful put Matt. and what about yourself jeff yeah the same goes for me because um for me like like music listening to music making music is like such an such a big part in in my life right and like it does help you in in some way to maybe like cope with some some shit that you have going on in your life right and and that's for me as well if you know if like if i'm like angry or like i don't know i'm not happy with something and like just listening to music and maybe like going for a walk or like i don't know like cooking something good and listening to music really helps me to like clear my mind and like you know maybe put things in in a different perspective um and i think if someone else is like kind of getting the same feeling that i do like if it helps coping with your struggles in just a tiny little bit i think that's that's uh the biggest compliment i think you can get and um yeah i'm i'm pretty happy with that and i also like just have fun fun with it right exactly. so many people are like um uh i i saw you know i saw a comment a few days ago like oh your first record was so much heavier than this and i was like oh man we're we just started out and we also we're already getting comments like that i mean just have fun with it if you don't like it it's fine um other people are gonna enjoy it and you can listen to the old stuff but like maybe take things not that seriously and just have fun with it exactly basically. exactly very well said uh, and looking ahead, what does the rest of 2024 hold for Dean Focus? Well, hopefully lots of shows. And um, yeah. <laughs> in the, the beginning of this year was already so intense. So I just hope that, I don't know, that everybody stays healthy. Yeah. We can do a lot of shows and just have fun together because that's what uh, what I just also perceived at the rehearsal room where we uh, rehearsed yeah. the new songs. It was just so much fun. And if if that's the thing that we can keep with making music, then 2024 could not be better at all. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, I, I, think, I think we're like so, you know, like uh, focused about releasing everything and playing shows. Like um, we're, we're like really in the zone, right? And and I think like that we shouldn't like settle down now that the album is out, right? I think we're like so in the zone that we can like, of course, still write new music this year, work on stuff, uh, you know, and uh, play as many shows at the same time. Basically, we also thought about like, um, you know, of course, we had the first singles come out and the music videos, and now the album is out, right? But there are like so many tracks, like maybe consumed by you, right? Which 
I think is such a good track again, and I really think it deserves uh, its place to like shine on its own. And I don't know, maybe we'll just shoot a video for that or do some other kind of way to like promote the other songs as well, because like we're so proud of of, of every single song that we put on this record. You have done an absolute outstanding job, guys. Absolutely outstanding job. So any UK promoters out there, get on these guys. Get them booked, <laughs> get them booked for the UK. Because I, I want to see these guys live. I haven't had the chance yet. <laughs> and uh, please, please book a show in Newcastle. So that'd, be, that'd be handy. That'd be handy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's noted. It's noted. We'll definitely come over there. <laughs> Excellent. Brilliant. Well, uh, before we do finish, I like to end our interviews just like this. The rules of the pit are the rules for life. When someone falls, we pick them up. Yes. So cheers very much, guys. And we'll see you really soon, hopefully. Mm-hmm.